Hi there. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about opening a bottle of wine. I'm not going to go through like exactly how to open it or show you how to open it or do anything like that. I'm going to talk about a couple little tidbits that I think will help. In addition, I want to talk about what happens if you, in the opening of a bottle of wine, you happen to break the cork. I bring this up because we've had a couple instances recently of customers talking about how they've brought a bottle home, they go to open it and they break the cork. When I say break the cork, I mean like um, this one's a totally solid cork but where the cork is just completely crumbly, you start to put the corkscrew into the bottle and it just crumbles away and um, you can't get any good bite or maybe you're opening the bottle and you snap the cork in half. I wanna talk about all that stuff. First thing I wanna talk about are openers. So we sell uh, a pretty simple, straightforward uh, wine key. It is, uh, it, we refer to it as a double hinge. It has the hinge here and it has the hinge here. And what that allows you to do, and these things are inexpensive. I think we sell them for, I don't know, I don't even know, like five bucks or something. What that allows you to do, and I'll put it in the bottle here in just a second, is to use this hinge point, this part right here, first on the top of the bottle, and allows you to pull in a fairly straight manner up to about here. And then you rock this whole thing, and you use this point on the bottle. The reason that's important is if you have a single hinge where it only has the hinge right here, if you have a single hinge opener, as you start to pull and you're pulling up, you end up having a situation where at the top of the release, just before the cork comes out of the bottle, that that cork is bent over. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, and then I'm gonna talk about some other openers too. So if I take this, and you know when you do this, you, you take and you lay the first screw basically like right on the edge of the bottle, tip this up, and the point goes right in the center. Now this is an empty bottle of wine. Um, I just stuffed a cork back in it. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure when you put a cork screw in, you wanna make sure you get it like pretty far and you're gonna go almost to the last uh, screw right there. When you do that, you get the tine, you get the, the uh, the whole screw portion as far into the cork as you possibly can. With other openers, this one's not too terrible, but with other openers, like the little exercise guy, right? Um, uh, this has, sometimes these have a lot shorter screw, and so when you put it in, unless you drive it really far into the cork, you don't get all the way to the bottom of the cork. If the cork is dry or crumbly at all, you may have a tendency to rip the top of the cork from the bottom of the cork. And that's where you have a lot of broken cork issues. I break them not often, but you break them. It just happens. So this is why I don't like these. These are really easy. The other thing that happens with these is very oftentimes people, they get that in there and they really try to open it quickly and they try to pull it down and pull that cork out fast. What I find is taking your time and slowly sort of working the cork with a good corkscrew, it'll help you sort of break that apart just a little bit uh, rather than like yanking on it so that you maybe rip it in uh, half. So anyway, let's go back to this. So when I first do this, you put the, the first contact point down and you start to pull. And as I do that, I got stuck in there pretty good. As I do that, as you get to the top and I'm still holding down, see how the cork is bending over, it's like bending in the direction. And what people have a tendency to do is pull like this. And that cork can break off right here. So you pull like that. And so that's a problem with when you only have a single hinge opener. So now, if instead I try this other one, and I'm gonna throw it in here quick. I gotta push this cork back down inside. And I do the same thing with our little double hinge opener. So again, I'm gonna put it in. Drive it all the way down. So then you go here first. You hit that first contact point on the top of the bottle. Hold your thumb against it. You're gonna pull straight up. As soon as you get to the point where you can't pull any further, you're going to hinge this again and go here. 
and now you've now this little hinge bends inward and then as you do that you continue to pull up and then once you get almost completely out just hinge that out of the way you're pulling straighter up and then you can just remove it that way you get almost right to the top and then you can sort of do it by hand the double hinge openers in my opinion absolutely work the best here's another thing that i really like about these simple little openers that we sell at the shop if you look at this portion right here that first notch that you push against the bottle you can kind of you might be able to see it it's a little flat now you can't really see it at any rate it's not super sharp there's a little bit of a curvature on top of those tines unlike I've got this opener which I really like this is a nice opener but if you look at that first and this one's similar rather than having two hinges it's got a portion that you push in but if you look at those that's a super sharp point and it's there's no flatness to it whatsoever so what I find with this opener is when I push it down and I'm doing that first initial pull using that first platform it's such so, so sharp it actually like gouges and cuts into the wine bottle which then I like stop I wipe it off so that there's no glass getting into my bottle I mean it's just like little granules whereas with ours you've got these little sort of curved in uh, portions on that and it really pushes against the bottle nicely so what happens if you break a, a cork we've had customers who say oh I broke the cork the wine must be bad that's not necessarily the case what it means most often is that the cork is dried out the wine is so old or the cork is the, the wine bottle has been stored improperly um, but it doesn't necessarily mean the wine is bad what most often happens is the top of the cork crumbles whereas you get a section of the cork you know right down on the bottom that is still probably sealing and keeping air from getting to the bottle that, that's the primary purpose of the cork when you do that if you can't get the cork out we recommend taking a butter knife push that in and let it go in and then get yourself a funnel and we have sold these at the store or you can use any funnel use one with a really really fine screen take this put this either in another bottle in a pitcher in a decanter pour your wine through it very slowly and let it filter out all the cork if you don't have this use a coffee filter use something else use a coffee filter inside a normal funnel or a paper towel inside a normal funnel that way you capture all that crumbly cork that's in your wine and it doesn't end up in your glass uh, lastly if that happens taste the wine drink the wine if it's completely oxidized that's a concern but last night I was at a gathering and uh, we opened a bottle of wine the cork was horrible it was like totally crumbly totally came out in a bunch of little pieces um, poured it into the glass the wine was fine it's that the cork condition is never a guarantee that there's a problem with the condition of the wine so try it at least drink it and if it's bad if it's oxidized I know that the tendency is to give us a call back and say hey I bought this bottle of wine the cork is all crumbly unfortunately we can't necessarily take a return on that bottle of wine first of all it's kind of against the law to take a return on the wine we don't generally do it and in that instance when the cork is bad we can't determine whether that's an issue that happened from the winery from the storage before we purchased it it certainly didn't happen during the time we uh, because we store all of our bottles pretty consistently and pretty universally or if it's been taken home and the wine has um, you know been stored improperly maybe it's uh, been cooked or who knows what caused the bad condition of the bottle of wine the only time we can perhaps take a bottle of wine back is if the wine is what's called corked or it has cork taint it smells like grandma's closet musty yucky and we verify that before we return it and in some of those instances we'll do it but it's not a blanket thing so don't break corks by using a proper corkscrew uh, if you do break it and you can't get the cork out push it in with a butter knife be careful some wine might splooge out and then strain it and drink it anyway if you have any questions comments uh, ask below I appreciate your time today and uh, thank you very much and cheers it's like 10 o'clock in the morning and, and not that I object to drinking all day but I've got stuff I got to do have a great day thanks